Hello, my friends. I'm Clover, and this is Genuinely Approachable Sudoku. And today we're solving a puzzle called In Umbra Pugnabimus by Philip Newman. I haven't translated that from the Latin myself. Please do it for me in the comments. Thank you. Um, this is an arrow XP Sudoku, so we have standard Sudoku rules. So we're placing the digits one through nine, ones each in each row, each column, and each outline three by three region. And on top of that, we have some X's and V's in the grid. Digits that are separated by a V have to sum to 5. Digits that are separated by an X have to sum to 10. And not all of the possible X's and V's have been given. Uh, therefore, there could be other pairs of digits that do sum to 5 or 10 that haven't actually been marked. We just know something about the ones that have been marked. There are also some arrows in the grid. So with arrows, the digits along the arrow have to sum to the number in the attached circle. And you can see we have some circles that have two arrows attached to each of them. In this case, the arrows each sum to the value in the circle independently. So these three cells sum to this, and these two cells also sum to this. I'm going to start by pencil marking my Vs with 1, 2, 3, and 4, because those are the only digits that can possibly be part of a sum to 5. And I'm also going to mark these cells because these are each the circle of a length 3 arrow with 6, 7, 8, 9. And the reason I'm doing that is that we have a minimum along this arrow, for example, or any length 3 arrow where all the cells see each other, of 1 plus 2 plus 3, which would be a total of 6. So the smallest total we could have for any of these would be 6. I'll eliminate 9 here, and I'll eliminate 8 here. And that means I can eliminate 1 from here and 4 from there, because 1 would be paired with 9. This is also going to be 2, 3, or 4, and this is going to be 6, 7, or 8. I can eliminate a 2 here, because I've eliminated an 8 there, and therefore a 3 from here. And I can eliminate a 2 from here and a 3 from here. This situation is the next thing that jumps out to me. I have 1, 2, 3, and 4 in this region, so these cells have to be 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now the biggest number that I can ever put along this arrow is a 6, because if it was any bigger than 6, like say it was a 7, the minimum would be 7 plus 1 plus 2, which would take us up to 10, which is too big to put in a single digit arrow bulb. So that's going to be either 5 or 6. And at most, these digits can be 3, we could go 1, 3, 5 technically, but they definitely can't be 4. So now this is either 1 or 3. This is 7 or 9, but this in fact can't even be 7, because 7 and 3 digits can only be made one way, 1 plus 2 plus 4, and we can see, because we have a digit here that's neither 1 nor 2 nor 4, we can't do that. So this is going to be a 9, and it's either 5, 1, and 3, or 6, 1, and 2. That being a 9 makes this a 1, and this is also going to be a 9. We eliminate 9 from here, and therefore 1 from here and 4 from here, and now we have this arrow which sums to 6 or 7. 6 is going to be 1, 2, and 3. 7 is going to be 1, 2, and 4. So either way, these guys are all quite small. That makes these 6, 7, 8, or 9. But there's a 6 and 7 in this row, so this can't be 6 or 7, so this can't be 3 or 4. And this guy can't be 1 because 1 would have to get paired with a 9, so therefore this also can't be 1, or that also can't be 9, rather. If this is a 7, we have a 3 here, meaning this cell is a 4. If this is a 6, we have a 4 here, meaning this cell is a 2. Either way, these digits are 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so these guys are 5, 6, and 7. I'm not sure I'm, I'm going to use that yet necessarily, but we can hang on to that for the time being. Alright, this is 6, 7, or 8. One fact about numbers that are that small in the bulb of a length 3 arrow is that they always have to contain a 1 along the arrow, because the minimum with no 1 would be 2, 3, and 4, which sum to 9. So if we know we're no bigger than 8, we definitely have a 1. So one of these cells is a 1. That means this isn't a 1. We have our 1 here. We also know that one of these cells is a 1, but there's a 1 in the row, so our 1 goes right there, making this a 9. And that tells us, because we've used 5, 6, 7, and 9, we still need some kind of high digit to sum up to 10 here, so we have to be doing 2 and 8, and the ant can't go on the arrow because that would make the arrow far too large. That's going to be a 3-4 pair. Now with 1 plus 2, to sum up to 6 we need a 3, 7 we need a 4, and 8 we need a 5. So we know that this cell contains a 3, a 4, or a 5. 
In fact, these cells all contain some combo of three, four, five, and seven, and we're not quite sure yet um, how to how to disambiguate that, but we will get there momentarily. Nine with no one or two is going to be either three plus six or four plus five. And that tells us a few things. It tells us that seven and eight live up here. In case it isn't obvious, this is in fact a blind solve for me. This is one of the days where I have not already tested the puzzle. Um, so here we are. There's a one in one of those cells, there's a one in one of these cells, there's a one here and there's a one there. So the only position for one in the central region is right there. I'm not sure that's going to give us a whole lot. <laughs> um, let's see. This could be 6, 4, and 2, 7, 3, and 4, or 8, 2, and 6. It can't be 8, 2, and 6 because there's a 6 there already. So that's not an 8, that's not a 2. So that's not our 8. Okay, so that's either 6 or 7, so this is going to be 3 or 4. This can't be a 7, and that can't be a 3 because there is a 7 in the region. What on earth am I missing? This might just be a particularly tricky gas. In which case, I'm starting to regret not having tested it ahead of time, but here we are. All right, we do have a one, two, three, four here, and there's only one position for a one in that quadruple, which is right there. So that does tell us a one goes there. And then this must be higher than four, so it's five or six. In fact, it must be 5, because the lowest we can possibly make this would be 1, 2, and 5, which is up to 8, which is also the smallest number we can put here. So that's going to be a 5, that's an 8, that's also an 8, etc. The 2 makes this a 4 and a 3, so we know which way around this goes. That's now a 4. 3 sums with 2 to make 5. Here we're going to need a 6. And... That's not a three because there is a three in the column. We can't be doing four and five here now because there is a four in the column. So we know exactly what these two digits are. They are five and eight in that order. And we need one, six, and nine. That's the only position for a six. And this is going to be a one, nine pair. This is the only position for six in this region, making this three, seven, and nine. So that tells us this can't be the nine. That's a one. These are going to be two, four, and five to finish off the row. That can't be a 4, because 4 plus 4 is 8, would be duplicating the 4. So it can't be a 2, so it must be a 5. And therefore these last two cells contain 1 and 7. There's a 7 there already. We have a 3 in this column, so that's now a 4. And I'm just cleaning up with a bit of Sudoku. 9 is 1 plus 2 plus 6, so I know this is a 6. The only remaining digit in this row is a 5, that resolves that into a 7. These are going to be 3, 5, and 6, and that can't be 3 or 6 because it sees those in its column. That makes this a 3. I have a 2 in this column now, so that's going to be a 4. That'll be a 1. I need a 5 and 8 to finish that column, and to finish the region I need a 6 and a 9. Got a 3 there, which gives me my 6 that I'm looking for. And that cannot be a 9. These have to be 1, 2, 4, and 7, and I have 2 and 7 in this column already, so that's 1 and 4. 4 tells me that that's a 1. The 2 in the row tells me that that is a 7. 5 in the column, so that's not a 5. 3 in the column, so that is not a 3. These two cells have to contain 6 and 9. These cells have to contain 2, 7, and 8. I see a 2 and 8 here, so this is a naked 7. So 2 there, so that's my 2 and my 8 in that order. The 8 resolves this, the 7 resolves this, and then this, and then that, the 9 tells us how this works, and with that we are done. That was Philip Newman's In Umbra Pug Pugnabimus. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Um, if you want to check it out yourself, there is a link in the description below this video, and I will see you again in three days.